Hey friends, thanks for uh, hanging out with me this afternoon. My name is Paul DeBettings. Uh, I'm a technology recruiter here in town. Uh, the idea for me wanting to put this together is uh, over the fourth quarter, some, some of 2017, but mostly the fourth quarter, uh, I had a number of inquiries from folks from the Bay Area, Seattle, uh, Austin, uh, and then some other folks in the Midwest, Chicago, Des Moines, Detroit, what's going on in the Minnesota tech scene. And so the idea is I wanted to uh, do sort of a version 1.0 or an MVP and see if this is something that will provide some value. So I'm going to um, uh, give you some ideas for what's going on in the Minnesota tech scene, some salary info, just like some upcoming events. And if you've got questions, you want to know more, like any point in time, again, ask a question, interrupt me. I'm, I'm way good with that. So what I need to do here is to figure out how to, oh, there we go. Um, so a little bit more about me. I've been recruiting uh, in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul for 20 years now. Uh, technically, it might be something like 20 years, three months, and eight days. And it was funny when I turned 20, 20 years back in November, my non-recruiter friends were like, "Wow, that's really cool, and you've really stuck with it, and way to go." And my technology, my recruiter friends are like, "What's wrong with you? And why are you still doing this?" Um, but generally, most of the time, I like most. I don't, how do I say it? Most Tom, most days I like most people and I think most people like me most days. And so that's why the recruiting thing has been something that I've been uh, into. I've been writing the Minnesota Headhunter blog since 2005. More like infrequently writing the blog is a better way of saying it. Uh, do some local national speaking and recruiter HR career topics. Had our first Midwest recruiting boot camp uh, this summer. Uh, I might mention that here in a moment for a second or two. Uh, and then just active in general in our local technology community. Uh, this is the view of uh, the co-working space, Coco, I'm in, in downtown Minneapolis that I spend about half my time. So half my time is at Coco, a quarter of my time is working uh, at clients, with clients at their sites, uh, and then 25% usually working at home. Um, so that's the view from uh, the Minneapolis Grain Exchange. Uh, Coco has uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, locations here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And we'll talk about the co-working scene here too uh, in a couple of moments. Um, oh, someone's already asking, so what's my background? So uh, back to this page for a quick second. Uh, 20 years as an IT recruiter, the first 15 years or so as a contingent search firm recruiter. Since November of 2012, um, for the most part, I've been helping companies who are either um, startups and small tech companies that don't have a recruiter and HR person on staff, and so I help them source, recruit, and hire, put some process and strategy in place, and then uh, be an evangelist or an advocate for them in the technology community. That's about 80% of what I do. 10% of it is uh, working with really large companies who need to grow out a particular group, like a mobile development group, a digital innovation group, or whatnot, usually large companies. Again, sort of the same idea, um, helping them source, recruit, hire, and then promoting what's going on at that company. And then 10% of it's just focusing on the recruiting process and strategy piece, consulting with groups, um, helping them kind of get up to speed. Because like most, most companies will say they're having some difficulty in some form or fashion hiring, not just technology people, but hiring in general with the uh, low unemployment rates, particularly here in the Midwest and of course around the country too. So um, thank you for asking that. Um, going forward a little bit, I mentioned before, so this is my like work life. Uh, for a couple of years, I've been talking about hosting uh, a boot camp for recruiters. We did a two-day event at the University of Minnesota's Carlson School of Management, uh, brought speakers from, in, from around the country, um, thought leaders to share anything from um, sourcing, um, employer branding, uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, hiring H1B folks, just the, the normal uh, normal things that most recruiting HR folks are dealing with. So we had a cool boot camp. There is going to be another one this spring. Uh, likely may maybe as late as June, so you can stay tuned for info on that. Uh, this fall, Minneapolis hosted uh, ERE, uh, ERE Media. It's a national recruiter conference held twice a year. We had it here uh, in Minneapolis, and I had an opportunity to speak, and so it was nice to see my uh, recruiter peers from around the country and a couple of them from, from across the pond uh, here as well. So Minneapolis, we had perfect weather, uh, so that was sweet. It was in the 70s during the day, and we had those cool nights, and people had a really good time. Uh, for the last couple of months, I've been at Prime Digital Academy uh, teaching the weekly job search and career classes. Um, they have four cohorts that are going on at a time, and so I'm working with the students uh, week by week, helping them. In the beginning, it's like networking, LinkedIn, to later on to negotiating salaries and what to do beyond graduation. 
Um, so that's just some quick stuff about me. Now we're to the part of why I'm doing this thing. So uh, I've got a bunch of slides here I'll run through. And again, you got questions, you got thoughts, you want to call BS on something, like feel free to uh, in that chat box. Um, this is that trend, right? Jobs are moving away from Silicon Valley. Lots of folks are escaping out. Um, whether it's cost of living, they've peaked out um, in their career path, they're tired of the, of the chaos. Uh, that's my word um, that I'm hearing frequently. Um, they're just looking for some work-life um, balance or life-work balance in some cases. Uh, so looking to find a new place. And the idea for me is to be able to say, like, if you are in the Valley, if you're in Austin, uh, if you're in Seattle and you're looking for a place to go, like the Midwest is a good place to find a great job, find a great technology company, uh, or do technology in a company, uh, and also be able to have a, a lifestyle that maybe you weren't able to afford uh, uh, in some of those other towns. So that's, that's how we got started with this. This was also, uh, I think from the summer, uh, early fall, um, this is the uh, annual flow in and out of the Bay Area. And so 2016, you know, the, it, it really started to happen. These are some stats from LinkedIn from August. Uh, also, a quick heads up, either later today or over the weekend, I'm going to do something similar to this just on my own time. It's going to be a Q1 2018 or winter, whatever you want to call it, uh, Minnesota IT job salary report. You'll see a few of these slides in it, but it's going to be another 45 minutes, but we're going to dig even deeper into um, recruiting, hiring trends around the country locally, uh, further into salaries, further into what uh, tech workers are looking for, further into what's going on in the tech community. But, so I wanted to, again, keep this as a bit of a one-on-one. Um, this is where people are coming to Minneapolis or like where they're coming from. Not a shocker that most of them are in the Midwest. Uh, there is the, the next numbers after that, though, end up being uh, the West Coast, Texas, uh, and some folks in some cities on the East Coast. This is where people from Minneapolis are going to. Again, none of these numbers or none of these locations were a shock to me. Um, and then this one, just again, doing both the in and the out, where people are coming and going from. And so not surprising, a number of you are in these cities, again, Seattle, San Francisco, Bay Area, Bay Area, Chicago, uh, not surprising on any of those. Um, so if you're doing, if you're, if you're on the West Coast, you're in Austin, you're in Chicago, or you're local, and you're going to a school, college, uh, a boot camp, you might be trying to figure out, like, where do I learn more info on the Minneapolis St. Paul tech scene? So here are my three first sources that I go to, uh, Mini Inno. Um, tech.mn, and then the uh, Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal. Uh, Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal, uh, most of our tech articles are written by Kathy Grayson, uh, who has become a longtime friend of mine. Uh, tech.mn started, I'm even forgetting, it's five, seven, ten years ago. It really has become the tech startup portal where you go for info. They do a number of interviews of local technologists. Again, this screenshot was, I think, from this morning or yesterday. Um, they do, they're doing a Q&A with the CFO of Go-Kart Labs. She just started, I think, in the last 60 or 90 days. Uh, Mini you know, is new to town. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's parent company, is it called? Them? I think it's American, you know, whatever it is. It's a sister company to the Business Journal. So Kathy Grayson from the Business Journal. Uh, and then Maddie running for many, many, you know, they're in, their same, in the same office space at the moment. But those are the three places that I go to multiple times a day to find articles, lists, who got funded, um, trends and things. So if you're not in the local area, you wouldn't have known, like, these are the first three places that I would go if I were you. There is a fourth one, but it's self-serving, but let me roll it anyway. Uh, again, Kathy Grayson from the Business Journal, my friend Casey Allen, who's a longtime entrepreneur and investor in town, and myself, started doing a podcast uh, back in March where I think we just did the 13th episode on Wednesday. Uh, so the first 12 online, you can get it through iTunes um, and others and, uh, and other um, locations. I can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, we have been the last couple of months now alternating between it being us and then a guest. So we've had Scott Burns, who uh, was the CEO, founder of Gov Delivery, uh, that was acquired more than a year ago. We had him as our first guest late this summer talking about his new startup, Structural. We uh, had Rob Weber, who uh, was the CEO and co-founder of uh, NativeX, and they're now uh, working on uh, a venture fund and also a startup school. Our third guest was just a few weeks ago, um, uh, Maria Plessel, who is the new 
uh, executive director at Ministar. Ministar is the group that runs Mini Bar and Mini Demo, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on when we talk about events. So we got 12 podcasts in the can. Uh, Kathy, uh, Casey, and I still like each other, so that's a good sign. Uh, and we uh, have our next one, so the one on Wednesday will debut, I think it'll get put online next Tuesday or Wednesday. So you can now follow MSP on deck on Twitter, uh, or just do a Google search and you will come across the uh, podcast link. Uh, the go-to calendar um, that uh, almost all of us use is at tech.mn. Uh, again, it being the portal, so this is the current calendar for this week. So these are all events that were posted on tech.mn this week, and that's a lot. Uh, Minneapolis St. Paul we do community very well uh, we're known for it both uh, whether it's business whether it's nonprofit work like we do community really well so if you're looking to figure like what's coming up in Minneapolis St. Paul what are the specific groups so we are talking about anything from the mini bar mini demo Twin City startup week events that will again happen in the next September or October I suppose to WordPress Wednesdays to lesbians who tech to like it's everything so if you're looking for user groups, meetups, uh, entrepreneurial type events, the tech.mn calendar is the place to go. I have a couple of events that I'm highlighting here right now that are coming up in the next weeks. Um, there's a couple of them that are missing. Uh, by the way, I didn't think of that until about four seconds ago. Uh, so we have a Super Bowl coming to Minneapolis. Uh, we will find out. So the Vikings have their first playoff game this Sunday. We would be the first team to ever play a Super Bowl uh, in their own stadium. So we're all a little jacked up, depending on, even my non-football friends are like, hey, that'd be kind of cool. Um, wrapped around that, though, were three events specific to sports-related type things. Uh, first one is Startup Capital of the North Showcase. This is put on by Minnesota Cup. Minnesota Cup is a, again, like a 10th year or so entrepreneurial um, uh, competition that happens every fall. Uh, at the University of Minnesota's Carlson School of Management. They're doing a bit of an alumni showcase, like the people who have won the different uh, um, categories and then uh, the, 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 what will we call them, the, the overall winner. And there's also gonna be some startups who are dealing with sports. That's on the 30th. Uh, SportCon is an event put on by Mini Analytics. Mini Analytics is like the techiest and nerdiest of the data folks in town. Um, in the past, they've done uh, finance and retail, marketing, people analytics, healthcare. I think I'm forgetting one. Uh, this one, so SportCon, not surprising. It's going to be a lot about, it's all about sports. Uh, it's going to be hosted at Optum, a division of United Health Group. I'm guessing if it's like most events, there's going to be a lot, probably 1,000 to 1,200 people who are attending. So uh, tickets opened up for that, by the way, this week. So if you're in town or you want to come to town for it, that would be a cool event to go to. That's on Friday. Then on Saturday, NFL First and Future is, I think this is their third annual event that, that the NFL is putting on. Uh, the NFL has teamed up with NBC Sports. NBC Sports has a group here in town called Sports Engine that was acquired uh, in a large acquisition uh, a year or so ago. So Sports Engine's running um, sort of the behind the scenes work on this. Uh, that's gonna be a fun event. February 8th and the week after that's mini demo and I think this one's at the Guthrie Theater again when you get this when I send you this deck these links this blue links again they will work so you can go right to the event page uh, mini demo tickets haven't been released yet uh, it's uh, at the Guthrie so I'm assuming that's around six or seven hundred people again techie nerdy group uh, seven groups usually get seven minutes to demo their whatever the software is they're working on lights turn on and off text messages get sent um, uh, pictures get taken you know it's 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 a really cool event um, no PowerPoint allowed and so this is a great opportunity for networking and getting kind of immersed into the local tech scene uh, March 2nd Tech Cities 2018 that's held at the University of Minnesota's Carlson School of Management this is probably more of a businessy uh, business leader type event than a coder developer DevOps product manager marketing salesperson type event um, Tech Cities 2018 uh, is a full day. Then Mini Bar, which is to me sort of the Super Bowl of the Minnesota Tech events. Well, now I suppose Twin Cities Startup Week, there are probably two of them. Mini Bar hosted April 14th at Best Buy headquarters uh, out in Richfield. Um, we'll again have around 1,200 people there during the day, 1,000, 1,200, whatever it'll be. Uh, there's usually like, what, 10, 12 tracks running all day long, and it's anything from you know, learning to code, being an expert coder, um, drones, Internet of Things, um, 
lots of things around entrepreneurs and startups and getting funding and I got funded and here's what happened type stories. Uh, every year, um, I think this will be a year, I don't know, how many bars, roughly 10 years. I think I, I, for the last seven or eight, I've done a, a presentation on uh, managing your IT career, and then in brackets, why the recruiter sucks so bad. It's just more of a funny line more than anything else. Uh, but the idea is like, this is a place to really go and get immersed again in the local technology scene. So mini demo, by the way, the one I'm gonna write, those are three times a year. The April 14th mini bar event is one time a year. Mini demo, mini bar, run by mini star. And Mini Star is that group that uh, Maria Plessel, who you know, in the podcast, is the executive director for. So that's kind of like the upcoming events for the next weeks. Uh, something that I've missed, one for sure, is Mini Hack. I think that's in two weekends. Uh, that's a weekend event, uh, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday type thing. And I'm missing, oh, Twin Cities Code Camp, uh, a one day on a Saturday. And I think that's in April. I'm doing that at the top of my head. Um, they're doing a call for speakers right now. Um, and I'm going to make a pitch to them about doing a career presentation that day. This is what a mini demo looks like. This is the one during Twin City Startup Week back in October. Uh, 650 plus people at the Riverview Theater, like it was packed. Yes, there are people standing up in the back. It was that full. And then there's behind this, the risers there, or behind that part is actually then the, the sort of atrium for the theater. And that also then was uh, pretty cool. Uh, as a part of Twin City Startup Week, we have what's called the Fly-In Program. Dawn's on me. I didn't mention that in the slide deck where we, uh, a bunch of us will help sponsor this, where we will fly people in from around the country who have interest in the local technology scene. And so that's why this, oh, and hey, 30 plus flew in. That's what that means. It's the, it's the Fly-In Program for Twin City Startup Week. Uh, but this is what an event looks like in Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's, uh, it's a lot of people. It's easy going. It's very casual, smart group um, that really like to get together and share things. Uh, something that's been going on now for a couple of years is the, uh, 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 we have a, each, St. Paul has a Chamber of Commerce, Minneapolis has a Chamber of Commerce. There's also a regional Chamber of Commerce called, um, um, wow, I can't believe I'm actually drawing a blank. Why am I so tired today? Um, uh, anyway, we started this thing called Naked MSP two years ago. Um, and the idea is that we started a regional hiring initiative. And uh, as a part of this, there's, so if you go to makeitmsp.org and you're trying to find out anything about what it's like to live and work here, so whether you're thinking about moving to Minneapolis, St. Paul, whether you're thinking about moving a business here, uh, when you get this deck, click makeitmsp.org, you can do the drop down menus. There's just tons of information, photos, some video, a lot of statistics. Uh, it's become a real go-to source. Um, there are currently four subgroups of Make It MSP that are that are meeting uh, on a at least monthly, if not every other month basis. MSP Hello, uh, it's about welcoming newcomers um, to the region. Um, MSP Mingle is uh, a bench to get people together, and it's also focusing on people of color. That's been one of the things that uh, has come up in some salaries and surveys um, that we are high on attracting people of color, but we are not high on retaining people of color. So two of the, the subgroups that are meeting, two others, MSP Tech, I'm on that one. Um, we've been meeting now for jeepers, a year and a half, uh, talking about how to grow the technology pool. Again, why in part why I'm doing this uh, webinar with you. And then another one on just sort of general recruiting um, tips and tactics. These are four screenshots of some fast facts that are on the Make It MSP site. By the way, it's Greater MSP. I don't know why I do a line blank. If they're lit, I know that one of them is listening. I'm surprised they haven't sworn at me now in the chat box. Um, I appreciate that they're not. Um, this has just been a bit of a busy week. Anyway, um, fast fact number one, we are home to 16 Fortune 500 companies, which is the highest per capita in the country. Fast fact three, um, almost... Like every time a job survey comes out, Minnesota or Minneapolis, St. Paul are ranking high. A uh, quick side note, I keep saying Minneapolis, Minneapolis, St. Paul, it's also the Twin Cities. You'll hear MSP as in Greater MSP, Greater Minneapolis, St. Paul. Just dawned on me for those of you not familiar with the region. So Minneapolis and St. Paul, roughly the 14th largest. Um, and I think we've got what a 10 county metro area now is, is how it's defined. Uh, we are, um, uh, so Minneapolis is on the west side of the Mississippi River, St. Paul is on the east side, and so it's kind of a bit of like a Dallas-Fort Worth type, uh, except we got a river running through the middle. Anyway, um, 
you know, it is the best market for job seekers on a number of lists over the last couple of years. Uh, been noted a number of times as being the best at something, not just in the top 10 or five, but the best at for working women, working moms, and working dads. Uh, fast fact five, these are the industries that are most prominent here in, in the region. Uh, so we have a very diversified economy. And I say that because um, my friends in the Bay Area know that they go through very steep, very high peaks, very steep valleys. We tend to be more like a roller coaster with a corkscrew down again. Ours tend to roll up and down. We don't have the peaks in the valley. So while we don't have the greatest of times like the Bay Area may have, we also do not have the worst of times like the Bay Area. So our diversified economy helps with that. There was a question about cost of living. Um, thank you for those who sent me an email ahead of time. Uh, so this is a, a, like three screenshots here. If you click on MSP cost of living, you will go to the make an MSP uh, cost of living calculator. I just did this for this one. If you have a current base salary of 120 grand, you're living in San Francisco, you're moving to Minneapolis. So again, based on income that you entered, you're earning 120 after tax in California, in, in San Francisco. That's making 68 here. The cost of living really is that steep, uh, the adjustment in the Bay Area in Minneapolis. Um, so again, some what some costs are, and again, like you know, what total what's your total monthly expenditure um, for comparing Minneapolis, San Francisco and Minneapolis? So we compare well nationally, and we compare really well to the largest of towns. And so we will frequently be talking about our our quality of life here, whether it's a food and whether it's our foodie brewery scene, whether it's the arts, whether it's the entrepreneurial act activity, whether it's just being able to get outside for an experience four seasons. Um, look, I'm a homer. I'm not going to be shy about it. I grew up in Minneapolis, went to school at the University of Minnesota, lived in downtown for 13 years, and now just live um, sort of in a, in a second or third week suburb um, west of town. So I'm a homer. I'm not going to be shy about it. I think Minneapolis, St. Paul is a pretty cool place to live. Some places to go to get more information. Uh, Twin City Startup Week 2016. Uh, uh, a dear friend of mine, I actually call him my brother, he's like you know, a brother from, from another mother kind of scenario, uh, Nick Roseth had put a year into creating a documentary on the Minnesota tech scene. And it's 40 some minutes long. If you go to documentary.com, notice that it's spelled differently. There's an E missing for document, as in Minnesota. Click on that link, you can see the entirety of the, of the, of the, of the documentary, or you can click on bits and pieces whether we're talking about culture, whether we're talking about um, lifestyle, whether we're talking, there's a piece on the weather, because uh, people always talk about, you know, Minnesota and it being cold. Um, so that part is addressed as well. Uh, so uh, maybe if I have to do a disclaimer, I was both interviewed for it and then later on became a, a small sponsor of it. Uh, Nick uh, busted his tail, it's a real cool piece if you're looking for information on the tech scene. I mentioned Twin City Startup Week a number of times. Uh, so this is still the dates for 2018 um, haven't been they haven't settled on them yet so that's why it still says 2017 on the slide uh, this past year this past October was our third Twin City startup week you know ballpark these numbers a bit I think the first year there were probably 20 or so events the second year there were was it just shy of 100 or was it 50 the first year 100 the second year we were just shy of 150 events this year uh, and it was 10, 12,000 plus people attended. It was a really full packed week. Uh, so again, it was anything from uh, farm to table to, like the conversations were awesome. So if you go to Twin City Startup Week, uh, go up to schedule, scroll through, then you'll figure out, you'll get an idea of the sense of uh, the scope of this. It was interesting to me, I got an email last week or two weeks ago from the Dallas Startup Week. Uh, they'll have theirs, I think it's in this spring, I think it's April. And they were talking about how huge their event was. Now, if I remember right, DFW is roughly the fourth largest Metroplex in the country, and we're around 14, give or take. Um, they were talking about how theirs was the biggest one they had had because they had something like 50 events and like 8,000 or 10,000 people, whatever the number was. And I'm like, we're totally kicking their ass. And we're a lot smaller than they are. So again, I'm pretty proud of our technology community and our entrepreneurs in town for what we're doing. There's an article here uh, from August, uh, which again, you'll be able to click TechCrunch when you get this. It talks about the best startup cities in the Midwest. Uh, Chicago usually is a leader on this, um, both in terms of number of people, number of dollars. Uh, that would make sense for as long as Chicago is. And it talks about the rest of the Midwest too, and particularly how Minneapolis and St. Paul are doing. 
Uh, Techstars uh, just had an announcement that uh, they already have Techstars Retail here in Minneapolis uh, with a partnership with Target Corporation, Target's headquartered here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, that has that was year two, I think, that they're already doing um, uh, taking applications for year three, so for 2018. Uh, announced at the end of 2017, uh, there's now Farm to Fork Techstars, and that's a partnership between Cargill and Ecolab. And so, uh, again, you'll see there, you got a tech data man and a mini, you know, like you can click on those to go check out more about that story. Uh, but for Minneapolis St. Paul to have two tech stars programs um, is pretty huge in the sign of what we got going on here. Another sort of thing that's going on, Silicon North Stars, this is through a partnership with Coco, the co-working space that I have. Um, uh, inner city kids getting uh, immersed into technology. And they also spend, uh, I think it's five days, seven days out in the Bay Area. Um, this is a partnership with Google for Entrepreneurs uh, and our Minnesota connections there. And so again, you have a lot of people in town volunteering, working with high school kids um, to get them more interested in sort of STEM careers. We mentioned Coco earlier. Uh, they had their expansion in August of 2017. That's the top sort of three photos. And then I kept sneaking in last year to take photos as they were doing the demo work, then had everything cleaned out, and then of course the final product. So if you're wondering what that's about, it's just that's my home base. Speaking of co-working, one way to be able to figure out how well a startup or a technology community is doing is how many co-working spaces do they have, are they growing, are they shrinking? Um, Tech.mn will come up with their new one for 2018 in the next weeks. If I remember right, there's roughly 33 locations here in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. Uh, we have large, well, we have Coco with its four locations. They're a privately held group here in Minneapolis. Um, WeWork has opened up uh, opened up during Startup Week. Uh, their large uh, their, their large office space is uh, um, uh, taking up two floors in the Capella Education Tower downtown Minneapolis. Industrious is here, so like there's lots of opportunities for mingling, for um, experiencing sort of different ways to work, but also all of those entrepreneurs, those solopreneurs, someone like me, frankly. Um, I kind of bounce around from once to one. While Coco is my home base, I still get around to the other ones now and again too. So that's a strong part of our scene. Uh, a, a trend um, that happened uh, late 2016 and 2017 is the number of companies who either are moving to Minnesota, particularly Minneapolis, St. Paul, or two, um, they're opening satellite offices here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And part of it is that the the salaries, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit later on. Um, salaries here are a little bit lower than they are on the coast uh, and cost of office space, just cost of doing business is a little bit less. We also have a much higher retention rate than other parts of the country. Uh, we tend to be a little more loyal here, I think, than other parts of the country. And so you have companies now who are coming to town, taking a peek, opening up offices, or just flat out moving their entire companies here. Uh, St. Paul has at times been um, an afterthought if I can say it that way, uh, in, in the tech scene. Uh, I mentioned Scott Burns earlier. Scott Burns sold, Scott, sold Gov Delivery. Uh, in the process, he and a number of other, other individuals bought what is the former Ecolab headquarters. Ecolab moved. They were in St. Paul, just moved down a few blocks. They're still in downtown St. Paul. Their headquarters came open, and Scott and a number of individuals bought the 20-story building, and they're turning it into a tech hub. And so they had just an announcement the other day of a company who had signed a lease. If I understand the unofficial numbers, two or three or four of the floors are actually somewhat spoken for already. Uh, so there's a cool sort of tech hub vibe going on in St. Paul. There's already a number of groups in the lower town area in downtown St. Paul, which if you're not from here, um, but if you're in the, in the region but not sure the tech scene, you'll, you may know lower towns where the St. Paul Saints have their stadium. Uh, it's a cool little vibe going on down there. Um, so that's something that's been growing over the last year. I couldn't find the latest one for Q3, but just to give you some sense of capital, what's going on here in Minneapolis St. Paul, 2017 was a good year. Uh, it's Again, it's kind of continuing to build, kind of continuing to build. That's what's going on here in the Midwest. These are the top 10 largest funds. Um, this is, again, from Tech.man. You can click the link in the lower right-hand corner. I've got two clients on this list um, as well, uh, groups I've worked with over the last year, year and a half or so. Um, so we have the Bright Health one, of course, was huge. It's $160 million. And I think that's on top of the other previous 70 or $80 million that they've raised. 
so these are these are companies of, of uh, raising some considerable numbers um, here in Minneapolis. Um, there's the there's the Amazon effect, and I've been on this one for the better part of a year now. Part of it was about the Amazon, sort of the competition, right, for uh, for HQ2. Uh, Amazon started an office here a couple of years ago, and originally it was that they they had space and they were going to hire around a hundred or so. Um, software development managers and then software developers and engineers. And then the number uh, came up that they were looking to be hiring around 300. Um, they have space that they are or have moved into in the North Loop uh, in downtown Minneapolis. Uh, North Loop is a is a neighborhood. That's one that I this one that I lived in for a long time. So it was residential area, lots of condos, lofts, um, townhouses. Uh, right on the border of downtown Minneapolis, and then a lot of um, commercial, uh, it's a foodie scene, retail scene. There's also lots of old uh, warehouses that are being retroed into uh, office space. And so a new building was put up, Amazon's moved in. So originally it was 100, then it's around 300. The off the record number hearing is now they're going to be hiring upwards of 1,000 folks. And so whether we end up getting HQ2 or not, which, you know, if you ask me, I don't think we would. I also think that we gave a pretty uh, a weak offer uh, compared to most. I don't think that we did as much as we could have, um, but that's a long conversation for another day. Uh, but Amazon's got a significant presence in here in town, and there are a couple of other large groups who have been kind of like peeking around to see if they can open an office here too. So again, this continues that trend earlier of companies movement to the region. Let's go back one step if we can. Uh, the local technology job scene bought uh, post-recession post Great Recession in quotes, right? Came off the market around March of 2010. And since then it's been a bit of a, it's been like a staircase, uptick plateau, uptick plateau, uptick plateau. Uh, we had a bit of a plateau, a longer plateau, I think the last half of last year, not even the last half, maybe just Q4. And that wasn't just a seasonal thing, it's that so many companies had hired so many people for the previous year that they took a bit of a breath. Uh, so that's um, sort of the history of the last years of hiring. Minnesota's IT unemployment has been below 2% for years. So to give you some sense that um, there was a statistic that I can't find and I couldn't confirm the source, but that there are X number of thousand more jobs than there are people uh, to be able to be hired for them, qualified people to be hired for them um, in Minneapolis and St. Paul. This came out, this is a Robert Half survey. I don't have the logo on here, but let's attribute where it should belong. Uh, they came out with a survey Top 12 cities for tech hiring in 2018. This is the first half. And Minneapolis ranked sixth. Uh, some of these are obviously our big towns. Yes, Des Moines is actually on it. There is a lot of stuff going on in the Midwest. Um, so to see Cleveland and see Des Moines on this list is not a shocker to me. Uh, so again, the, the, the growth in hiring here in Minneapolis, St. Paul. I also made a prediction on the MSP on Deck podcast for 2018 that I think we're going to see continued job growth and we're going to see some layoffs too. Going back to the part where a lot of companies have hired over the last year, I think that um, there's going to be some churn. And it's not that big of a deal, though, because most of these people are going to easily swing into new opportunities here in town. So it's not like it's during the recession where they, they lost their job or there weren't other jobs. Uh, not like that at all. Um, so back to the slide, what's the current job scene like? Um, to give you an idea, so uh, myself and a group of recruiters in town through Make It MSP went to Chicago and recruited for a day back in September. So it was ta Target, Best Buy, United Health Group, Medtronic. Man, I'm trying to make sure I don't forget anybody. Um, myself uh, representing um, LiveFront Branch Messenger. Uh, LiveFront is a mobile development shop here in town. Branch Messenger is a startup. And uh, the Wildflower Foundation, which is uh, a growing a technology team to create technology to create um, one room Montessori type schools uh, across the country. So we went to Chicago to recruit, like we weren't shy about it. Um, Dan, who's in that blue shirt with the Make It MSP t-shirt, uh, he is uh, fantastic, ran a lot of Facebook ads, ran like newsletters like we've been doing. He's been doing this now for Make It MSP for a couple of years. Uh, had a good turnout, had a lot of really sweet conversations. So that's kind of where we're at in Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's like, we can't just come. We just can't continue to have, be competing with each other. We need to be bringing more people to the region. So try to be an advocate for that when possible. Again, one of the reasons why I'm doing this session. 
uh, how does Regents for IT uh, pay? This is 2017. Uh, again, we ranked in, what is that, seventh uh, in the top 10, as we seem to always do. Um, so that's obviously a positive. Here's another one, um, top metro cities by salary. Minneapolis ranked fourth. This is from the DICE survey uh, last spring. Um, total IT jobs. Um, we always rank around 17 um, in states. And this is, again, this is more of a, of a population thing than a jobs thing. If you look at the states who are in front of us, not shocking that most of them will have more jobs than we do just by based on population alone. So um, give you some sense of where we are ranking on that. And then this is the DICE salary uh, from last spring. So it kind of gives you the average salary increases um, over the past years. And then also another one from DICE by state. And again, you'll note that there were a number of states that actually went to the negative. Um, uh, and while Minnesota went up 0.5 for the large cities and the large states, um, that went really well. Here is a Randstad 2017. This is a salary report for Minneapolis and St. Paul. And again, this is looking just on technology jobs. I haven't gone through the marketings, the recent Robert Half marketing uh, salaries survey yet, uh, but this is the uh, their numbers for Minneapolis and St. Paul. So when again, when you get the deck, you can go through these a little bit slower. So let me stop. I just wanted to toss that all out there. That's a lot of talking. It's I can ramble forever. It's kind of what I'm what I'm wired for, but like, what do you want to know? What do you want to know about the technology community? What do you want to know about the scene? What do you want to know about um, how we're doing? Um, there is one question that dawns on me that someone asked like, what's the product scene like here in Minneapolis, St. Paul? Product mean product managers, UX designers, UX researchers. Uh, it's really strong. We have a number of SaaS groups here in town uh, in the startup technology space um, with really strong groups. And then of course with Best, Best Buy Target, United Health Group, um, there's uh, one of the students at Prime Digital Academy, uh, a recent grad, not a student, but a recent grad is actually starting up. Uh, if you check me out on Twitter, I posted, I tweeted that out last, yesterday or last night. He's starting a new user group for UX designers to get together and kind of do peer-to-peer -peer whiteboard sessions. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool too. Uh, so it's a, good, it's a good scene to be involved in. Uh, we, uh, then there's a question about, so what's the digital scene like? Meaning, so... Again, like I always get, I always caution like on salaries and surveys and rankings and things. I always look for trends. It's nice when you rank high, uh, but usually um, people will think of like New York, Chicago, LA for the digital scene and Minneapolis is always number four, number five, sometimes number three on those different surveys. Most of the, the, the national ad PR agencies that are headquartered in, in those three cities most, if not all, close to all of them have an office here in Minneapolis, um, St. Paul as well. So that's also a pretty vibrant part of our community. There's an event or a group called MIMA, the Minnesota Interactive Marketing Association, um, which is the, um, I think by members, the largest group in the country. And I also think it also has the largest annual event in the country. So again, to give you some sense of community and what's going on here in town. So with that, again, like, let me ask you, like, what do you want to know? This is that awkward pause moment, by the way, while I grab a drink of water. So if you want to know something, type it into the, the chat box. I'm also getting a note. Um, what's it like for recruiting HR professionals in town? I'm huge on this part of this, that trends of recruiting, hiring, and by HR recruiters, I mean corporate corporate search firm, you know, consulting, staffing firm recruiters. Um, I, if I in November I had the most amount of jobs posted on my site since I started doing it for November, also for December, and I have a bunch more to add this weekend on top of the ones that I did during the week. So I always use that as a predictor. Right? It was easy to see when I was doing this in 2007 and 2008 that suddenly there were a lack of recruiting jobs. You would start hearing about layoffs and then there weren't like any jobs being posted anywhere. Um, we're on the other side of that spectrum right now. Um, companies are continuing to hire recruiters. So that's a very positive, you know, sort of economic sign. Companies wouldn't be hiring recruiters unless they're going to be hired. I mean, that's a simple thing to say, but it's, a, it's certainly a bellwether canary in the coal mine, whatever sort of analogy you want to use. 
Other questions, thoughts? Does this help? Is like posting this online worth doing? <laughs> Might be a question that I have to you. Um, I'm going to do another one of these probably in another 30 days or so. I'm going to spend probably a little bit more time making it more specific. But again, particularly for those of you in the Bay Area who are looking for jobs and thinking about moving, I just wanted to get this done now. Um, so I'm hoping that, that this is a bit of what you were looking for. So other than a couple of messages that I already kind of covered, I don't have anything new. Um, so if you want to learn more about what's going on, you want to ping me. Um, I almost forgot to do that. That's where to find me. You already got the email from me. You'll get these. You'll get the slide deck probably just this afternoon. Um, it shouldn't take any longer than that. Uh, follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram. You're going to get a healthy dose of sunset photos, some business photos, um, like views on the lake or whatever it might be. So if there's anything that I can be doing to help you out, if there's anything that you've got in front of a friend, send them my way. Uh, I'm going to start creating way more content, way more, much more. Again, I think I'm tired. Um, I'm going to be putting more content on the on the on, on the Minnesota Head Hunter Minnesota Head Hunter blog about what it's like to live and work here, so that people can I can kind of tag team with what with what Make It MSP is doing and then make it really specific for technology professionals. So I appreciate you all hanging out with me. Uh, again, drop me a note, let me know if this is what you were looking for, or ask questions, or whatever it might be. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. Take care, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Thanks.